Hi, in today's video I'm going to be covering how to remove TV logos and other objects from videos using the FFmpeg D-Logo filter. So first of all what I'm going to do is cover the actual options here and how it works is very simple. Basically it accepts a couple of parameters, X and Y for the coordinates and um, width and height for the width and height and what it's going to do is actually draw a rectangle over the video and what you can do is specify a um, show option which will draw a little green outline around the box while you're working on it. So what I'm going to do is actually use a video um, from the Magpie channel as an example because it has got, it's got some logos. So I'm going to come across to the terminal and go in here and what I'm going to do is play the um, demo video here. Bonjour. So as you can see um, in this video what we've got is um, the logo in the top left and we've got the uh, Newcastle badge up here which actually is on the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to mask out both of these um, bits of the video using the D-Logo filter. So let me come across to my notes here. So what I'm going to show you is how you can use um, FF Play to preview the filter before you record it with um, FFmpeg, how you can draw the green rectangle outline, how you can mask out multiple bits of the video at once, and also how you can apply the filter to a particular range in the video. So what I'm going to do here is come across, and this is the first bit of code we've got. This is FF Play input which is the name of the input video, and then dash VF for the video filter. What we've got here is D logo equals X and Y. So these are the X and Y coordinates where it's going to um, start drawing the, the filter. And then we've got the width, height, and show one. And I'll show you how this works. So now if I come across here, what you'll see now is we've got a green box here we've got a, a rectangle with a green outline and it's actually masking out that whole logo here and one important thing I need to mention is the way this worked is by um, using the surrounding pixels to mask out the area under the rectangle so you can't put the rectangle in the very top left at zero zero because then it will have no pixels to work with. Okay, so here you can see we've masked this out. And what I'm going to do is now show you the same thing, but without the green rectangle, so you can see how it's actually masked out. Bonjour. Okay, so it's gone. It's gone completely. So now what we want to do is mask out the second one here. So I'm going to switch back and come across to the notes for the top right. And you do need to play around with this to actually get the positioning right. And what I'm gonna do is actually also show you what happens um, when something enters the, um, the rectangle, the, the effect that happens. So again, we're using D logo and we're setting the X to 1400, the Y to 20, width 500, and height to 480. As you can see here, what we've got is the logo masked out. You can see the outline of the rectangle here. And again, we make sure not to put this right in the top right hand corner because otherwise it would have no pixels to work with. So you can see that's completely masked out. What I'm going to do is come across, show it without the rectangle. Bonjour. Okay, so you can now see this has been completely masked out. What I'm going to do now is move on to how you mask out multiple areas at once. So what we're going to do is combine the two bits of code um, that I've just showed you into a single bit of code. I'm going to show you the syntax for that. What we've got is FF Play input um, dash VF for the video filter. 
And then we have D logo, um, the X and Y coordinates um, for the top left, width and height. And we don't actually need this show option here. Let me just remove that. So the way you um, use multiple filters is by separating them by a comma. So you can see here, we're running D logo once for the top left, and then we're using D logo again for the top right. And what I'll do is I'll show you how this looks. Bonjour, Magic. welcome back to Transfer Talk. So both of those are now gone. Um, so let me just play the original. Bonjour, everyone. You can see well here's the original with the logo in the top left and the club badge in the top right. And now if I run the filter like this, Bonjour, everyone. they're both well gone. Like a transfer talk. Quick one. You can see there's no banding, no issues um, occurring. And so what I'm going to do next is actually show you how you can apply this to a range in the video. So FFmpeg has something called timeline editing. And this basically allows you to specify that a filter should only um, kick in in a certain range of the video. So what we have here is exactly the same bit of code. But if I come here, what you'll see is um, I don't need the show bit here again. We put uh, show one that draws the rectangle, show zero um, hides the green rectangle, which is the default. So let me just remove this here and come back across. So what we've got is um, the D logo filter, and what we're doing is we're after each filter, what we're doing is we're saying enable between, and this is a time range of um, kicking in at zero seconds to 10 seconds. What this is gonna do is it's gonna apply the filter for 10 seconds and, and then stop. So if I come across here, and what I'll do is I'll play this and after 10 seconds, the Filter will magically um, disappear. Bonjour, everyone. Welcome back to Transfer Talk. Quick one for me as I'm about to leave the house to go watch Newcastle United Women's take on Ipswich Town in the FA Cup fourth round. Games at Kingston Park. So and you see the filter in. comes back in there. So that's how we can apply the filter to a particular range. So again, Bonjour, everyone. Welcome after 10 back seconds, to this is going to. Quick one for me as I'm about to leave the house to go here, watch So Newcastle no Newcastle logos. Women's. Take on Ipswich Town in the FA Cup fourth round. Games at Kingston Park. So there we go. To get in. Come back in at 10 seconds. So the next step is how do we record this? And we do that with FFmpeg. So it's basically um, the same filter code. So what we've got here is FFmpeg I, the input file, the video filter. Okay, and then what we're doing is um, we're specifying some options here. The, <coughs> the format is YUV 420p, which is needed for a lot of players like FFM, um, like QuickTime. Um, the next section we have down here is these move flags, fast start dash F MP4. And what this does is this adds the iPod Atom to the beginning of the video so that it's streamable on the web. Um, if you don't do this, what happens is um, you try and play the video, it will have to download the whole video before it can actually be played on the web. So this is how we would um, record the video like this. So I run this. And I'll just leave this to Chandra away for a bit and you can see here 10, 11, And what I'll do is I'm actually going to go through the whole um, clip because what I want to do is actually show you um, what happens when this fails. And it will fail when something enters the area of the rectangle that's actually being masked out. And what will happen is it will cause banding. So um, let me just come across here. So. 
think it should be this one. Yep. Bonjour, okay. everyone. Welcome back to Town in the FA Cup. So you can see here. In the bag. I'm just, right, in the right bag. now this is the bit I wanted Dan to show you. Byrne. Dan Byrne from Brayton. Please from Brayton. He's from Blythe. Coming back up to the north. Loves it, yeah. Supported the club as a boy. The big. Okay. So what you can see here is there is a um, an overlay of the, on the video showing a tweet um, in a sort of like little um, box here. And what you can see is that there's this effect here uh, where it's sort of banding, sort of stretching the image. And that's because this overlay has entered the area that we were masking out. And so it's causing this effect. And that's one thing um, that can happen. And this is why um, the timeline editing option is useful because you can actually um, work around this by sort of bringing the logo back under here. I could bring the logo back for a few seconds while this is here and then hide it again. But I just wanted to show you what actually happens. Um, for instance, if there's something on screen that enters that area or um, another thing is if you sort of move your head into that area or your, your hands, you're going to get this, this effect. So that's just something to bear in mind when using this. So that's basically how it sort of work so let's just come back here and what we have down here is um, the same option but with the timeline editing so what we've got here is how we can apply the filter to a particular range in the video so if I just come across here And you can see after 10 seconds, I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop that. And it should be this one. And this is the um, example I showed you where the um, filter is applied from zero to 10 seconds and then comes back. Bonjour, everyone. You can Welcome see here. Transfer talk. Quick logo. Since I'm about to leave the house to go watch 10 seconds. Women's. Take on I'm Ipswich back. Town in the FA Cup fourth round. Games at Kingston Park. Only three Bang. quid to get in. Bonjour, everyone. Welcome back to Transfer Talk. Quick one three, for me. Four, so about five, the house to go watch Newcastle United Women's seven, take on Ipswich eight, Town in the FA Cup fourth nine, round. Games at Kingston ten. Park. And if by magic, they both come in. back. So that's how we can apply the FFmpeg D logo filter to a video. Um, apply it to multiple places. We can use FFmpeg to preview the video before we record it. Uh, we can draw a sort of outline where the rectangle is going to be so we can see exactly the position. So let's just come back and go over this again. So first of all, this is the um, notes from the FFmpeg filters documentation and basically it's just suppressing a TV logo by a simple interplay um, interpolation of the surrounding pixels now there was another a, another FFmpeg filter called remove logo I think it was and the way that worked is it would actually require you to have an image of the logo um, which you would use to then sort of Kind of mask out the that image in the video um but basically what this one does is as i said it allows you to specify x y coordinates width and height to draw a rectangle over an area of the video that you want to mask out then it uses the surrounding pixels to remove whatever under the rectangle and that's basically the gist of how it works and again we've got the show option when set to one it's going to draw a green rectangle over the screen so let's go through that again so this is the top left for ff play input dash vf for the video filter the logo the x and y coordinates the width and height and show one to show the rectangle bonjour it's that's showing the rectangle green outline and again you need to make sure that there's 
surrounding pixels otherwise it's not going to work so if you set this again to zero zero it's going to fail and, and basically say there's um not enough pad room and basically what it does is it needs to be able to get the color of the surrounding pixels on all four sides of this rectangle for it to work so the next stop was doing the same thing but without the dash show one option Bonjour. and again that's how it looks completely masked out so then what we did was we did the top right and again you're going to need to play around Bonjour. with this um the other thing that you could actually do is you could take a screenshot of um, the video um, and bring it into GIMP um, or any other image editor and actually uh, sort of work out the coordinates um, that you need to put in to mask this out and also the height and the width so you could actually sort of you know draw a rectangle on another layer um, in the image that you've extracted from the video so you can actually work out the um, exact position and the width and height um, but that's another option that you can do or you can just do it manually like this by um, changing the x and y positions and the height and the width with the green rectangle so you can see the area it's going to mask out once you've got it figured out you move the show one option come back here Bonjour, that's totally Welcome masked out to talk. and then to apply two filters to mask out two locations the syntax is basically separating the filters with a comma so you can see here we've got vf d logo and the x and y the width and height comma and then the next section here so when I do this, switch to the right thing. Bonjour, everyone. They're gone completely. Talk. Quick. And you can see there's very little um, artifacts that you can see. Um, one for me is I'm about to leave the house for watching you guys naked women. See that there was anything there in the first Ipswich place. In the and this is quite a good example because it's got a solid background. It's um, got two logos that we can play around with to mask out and again the other option that you've got is buying the the logo filter between a time range and the way you do that is i'll come across here so after the filter what we've got is enable equals between zero and ten so that's masking that's applying the filter from zero seconds to ten seconds and then after that what we have is comma then d logo again and then colon and um enabling the filter between that time range again so what that does Bonjour, say, everyone. This applies the filter. Quick one for me is I'm about to leave the house to go watch it. It will basically expire after 10 seconds. So, in a couple of seconds, there you go. It comes back up. So, that's why using FF Play um, is really useful because it allows you to preview stuff before you actually record it. Once you've got the position set, uh, you can then basically reuse the filter block of code. So this VF block of code here, um, you can use that in FF Play and then reuse it in FFmpeg to actually uh, record the video. So again, we've got applying the D-Logo filter to two locations and recording it with FFmpeg. And we're setting the pixel format to YUV420 move flags to fast start so that the video is actually streamable on the web and again down here what we've got is applying the filter um, on a time range 
and recording it with FFmpeg. And again, let me just switch back here. So what we've got is we've got the input. Bonjour. This was the original. You can see we've got a logo on top of the video. And we've got club badge, which is physically on the background here. So we're moving two different kind of things. Um, and if I come back across here, Bonjour, you see that's, well, that's it with it basically talk. removed. One for me. Well. And you wouldn't know. And the other thing that you could do is um, actually overlay another image here. So you could remove something and actually put something in its place. So if you were feeling particularly mischievous, you could do something awful like replace the Newcastle logo with a Sunderland logo, but that's just really bad and I'm not going to do that. Um, but this is how you could um, remove logos or other objects from a video. And again, this is useful because um, it's used a lot for, you know, if you, um, for removing TV logos and stuff, but suppose you've got a situation where you've got this footage um, like this and you want to reuse it, but you don't want, you want to reuse your footage, but you don't want the logos in it. Um, you want to reuse it in another video project or something. So what you can actually do, as I said, is you can just Bonjour, remove everything, everyone. clean it up. Um, it also could be a case that um, perhaps you've updated your logo um, and you actually want to add a new logo to the video. You can mask out the old one and then there are ways where you can actually use FFmpeg to actually overlay another bit of video or an image on top of this. So it'd be useful if you wanted to swap out a new logo or something on a video uh, and you didn't want to reshoot everything. That's another option. Um, but it's really easy to use. Works absolutely perfectly um, on the example that um, I've just shown you. Um, but you know, your, your, your mileage may vary um, according to the footage and also bear in mind what happens um, when something enters the area that's being masked out um, as I showed you um, I think it was this one yeah there we go so again this is one thing to look out for is that if you've got something that enters the area that's being masked out you're going to get this sort of stretched effect um in the video um and in which case you may want to just apply the filter um before this sort of kicks in um and then not apply it so that the filter is not applied when this is this is on and then when this bit of video finishes you can reapply the filter so you can reapply the filter to um, multiple times in the video and multiple locations and it um, basically works really well in either masking out TV logos or um, other objects in the video. So this is basically the FFmpeg uh, filters page with the D logo option and again the previous version of this filter I think was called remove logo. And that works by you having to have a image of the logo um, and using it with the video and then it would kind of like try and sort of use that image to work out what it needs to mask out. Um, but this version is far superior um, in that it doesn't require an image and it just works by taking the colors from the surrounding pixels to mask out whatever's under the rectangle. So it's a really good way to Either remove a logo or remove um, any object in the um, in the video that you don't want. And again, I was using a example from the Magpie channel um, to do this because it um, had a solid background and had two logos. It was a particularly good example to use. And again, I'll put links to all of this under the um, under the video. But again, it's, it's dead simple to use. You just specify the X and Y coordinates. 
And again, make sure that you don't set them to zero, zero in the top left, otherwise it's going to fail. You set the width and the height, specify show equals one, and that's going to draw the green rectangle. Once, you've, once you're satisfied with um, how it's masking things out, you basically remove the show one option from the block of code. So you can use FF Play to actually preview this before you record it, um, which is really convenient because otherwise it would just be a bit of a pain. And again, just go through the, the areas you're going to mask out, and then you can basically combine multiple filters by separating them with a comma. The syntax for the timeline editing is that what we have here is enable equals between t comma zero comma one um, comma ten um, after the first um, block of code with the d logo filter. Then we run comma and we apply the d logo filter again. We set enable again. And basically, as I showed you, what that does is that tries to filter for 10 seconds. Bonjour, everyone. Welcome. And you can see there, I mean, that's really, you know, done an excellent job. And because typically, what you'll get with, um, Someone using a background like here, you can see there's sort of like bits of banding um, in the difference of, this, of the light. So you'll see here like the shadow around here. So we've got slight, it's not, not a single solid color, there's sort of a bit of a gradient to it, but it's still masking it out perfectly. Like transfer talk. Quick one for me, as I'm about to leave. You wouldn't know you guys there was anything Williams. there. Till 10 Ipswich seconds in. In the fourth round. In. There we go, and they come back. So you can see, how how good that is um yeah, quick to use and uh you know it's really useful as i said either to remove a tv logo or perhaps you know any other objects um in the video that you don't want to show maybe like um i think there was an episode of um game of thrones where someone left a can of coke on the table um <laughs> so you, you, you know maybe you'd like got a shot with something that shouldn't be in there um you could use this technique to actually draw a rectangle over that object and basically mask it out from the video so that's the ffmpeg d logo filter you do need a recent version of ffmpeg to use this um i did have a look at the ffmpeg change log but i couldn't see when this filter which version of ffmpeg this filter was introduced but I did do a video on how you can install FFmpeg 5 um, using Nix PKGS on Linux. So that's what I'd recommend doing is just grab the latest greatest version of FFmpeg so that you've got all these useful filters. And again, in a previous video, I covered how to use the Xfade filters to do transitions between videos. But I'll put links to all this under the video. Um, and also, uh, you might want to check out the Magpie channel if you're um, a bit of a masochist like myself and a Newcastle fan and want to follow the highs and more likely lows of Newcastle. Um, so that's where I took the video from, um, just to use it as an example to actually mask out those logos. Um, so that, you know, so maybe you want to put a new logo in or you want to reuse the footage and you don't want the, the logos to be visible in that particular bit of footage. So I'll leave links to all this. This is the documentation on the e-logo filter here. You can see there's not terribly much documentation here. Um, but I'll put a, put a link to this document here showing how you can use FF Play to preview the filter. And then once you're happy with the result, you could use FFmpeg to record with that filter and then mask out um, those areas of the video and also apply the filters to a particular time range in the video with the um, timeline editing um, options in FFmpeg, which use the enable keyword here 
to actually apply the filter to a particular range in the video. So I hope that's helpful. Um, maybe of some use um, if you've got, you know, a bit of footage with a TV logo on you want to remove. Um, this would be the, the, the tool to use to get rid of it. So that's all for now. And um, I'll put links to everything under the video so you can go through the code and have a little experiment yourself with your own bits of footage.